Welcome to my channel. I'm Geezer Geek. You can call me Dave if you like. This video will consider some things that you can experience should you decide it's time to upgrade and replace the hard drive in your laptop computer. The deep dive part of this will be the actual steps for upgrading or replacing a drive in a Dell N7110. Now, I'm not going to be discussing transferring your drive contents, as I've already covered that in another video that I did about Macrium Reflect. For that content, go ahead and click the link that you see up there in the upper right-hand corner, or use the link that you'll find in the show notes below. Oh, and if you get value, or even just a laugh or two, why not click like and subscribe and, well, I have more videos in preparation. First, let me show you a couple of obsolete laptops for which it really is not feasible to upgrade to a modern SSD. I'll talk a little bit more about that, but you'll see why here. Here we're looking at the bottom of an older Toshiba laptop. As I recall, this one came out with Windows Millennium Edition installed. And one of the good things about this particular laptop, and laptops in general back then, was the way you could so easily access many of the components through these easy-to-remove panels on the bottom or side of the case. This particular laptop offered expansion options through the PC-MCIA slots on the side of the laptop. You could get cards that provided additional functionality for your computer, slot them in, install your drivers, and you're good to go. This is one example. I used this particular expansion card to provide a SCSI port so that I could scan photos with an HP photo scanner. If this particular laptop could be used solely, disconnected from any network, including especially the, uh, the internet, but really any network, or any internet attached devices, or if it had a currently supported uh, operating system that it could run, then despite being obsolete, it still could be useful today. I will get into that in more detail in a later video. I'm not going to go into it here. What I really want to show you is the ease of changing the hard drive on this older computer. To change the hard drive, all you have to do is remove the panel on the side by removing that one screw you see there. Remove one more screw inside that panel. Take hold of a plastic tab designed to pull the drive carrier out. Just pull the drive out of its bay. Easy. Now you're not going to be putting a modern SSD into this laptop because modern SSDs use a completely different interface. This used, back then, what was referred to as Parallel, or IDE, as its interface. Modern interfaces are SATA. It is possible still to find uh, the IDE drives that are useful in this kind of machine, and you could replace it should your drive fail. But it's not going to be with a modern SSD. It's a different interface. Now this Gateway 4525 was bought a few years later, and as I recall, it came with Windows XP. Again, many of the components are very easily accessed through one or more of these panels on the bottom of the case. In this particular shot, I have the Wi-Fi card exposed. And there you see the RAM exposed. In the upper right corner, you see the panel that exposes the CPU cooler. And in the lower left corner, you see the panel that exposes the hard drive. If you worked in a dusty environment, having this uh, CPU cooler panel, uh, having that was very handy because you could blow out your cooler by just easily removing that particular panel. With this particular layout, after removing the hard drive cover, you just have two more screws to remove. So replacing the drive in this particular computer is an easy task to do. Just three screws and, you know, you've got the job handled. However, once again, you're not going to be replacing this particular IDE drive. 
with a modern SATA drive. The interface is different. It just will not work. And you can tell there is no room in there, in that drive bay, for any kind of adapter that would convert a package like this and allow it to slot into that particular drive bay. So you have to look for a different option if you want to try to upgrade. It would require perhaps an adapter like this one. This one will adapt an MSATA drive to the IDE interface, and then you could drop it in in replacement. MSATA drives look like this. Some desktop motherboards from a dozen years ago or so had MSATA slots in them, and this particular one from Gigabyte is one of those. Now you'd need to research the cost of the adapter and the cost of the MSATA drive to see if you thought it would be worthwhile to do something like this in your case. Now another route, again, needing research, whether it's going to be effective for you, is you could do a SATA M.2 drive using an adapter like this one. Now, NVMe will not work in this. I've not found an NVMe to IDE adapter. Again, you'll have to research whether this kind of thing would even be reasonable as far as cost for you. You have to evaluate um, availability. You have to consider bang for the buck. You'd also want to think about, do you want to buy a racehorse? And then the only use you use for it is to tether it to a pole on a children's carousel. That's effectively what you're doing with this modern M.2 technology. Considerations for older tech. If you're going to upgrade, you're going to need some kind of adapter, either for an MSATA drive to IDE or an M.2 drive to IDE. Can you get them? Is it worth the expense? Can you get your computer to boot from USB? If you go that route, you're throttling your throughput to your drive, uh, to and from your drive, throttling the speed with which your computer can work. Considerations. On the other hand, what about e-waste? Can you repurpose this older tech without actually upgrading it, but still make it functional so that you're not contributing to the global e-waste problem. I'm going to get into this in greater depth with one or both of these computers in later video work. What I want to do now is look at what you might encounter should you decide you want to try to upgrade the drive in your current tech. Now, the specifics are going to vary from maker to maker and even from model to model within the same maker. So this specific project is a Dell N7110. Your specifics are likely to be significantly different, especially if you're from a different brand. But this will give you some ideas about what you will encounter in the process of doing your upgrade. Getting started. Be sure to take precautions against static discharge. You're getting into sensitive parts of your computer and you do not want to risk a static charge damaging some sensitive component in your computer. Next, be sure to unplug the device and remove the battery. Here you see that there are two thumb latches that you slide and then the battery can slide upward on this screen. With the battery removed, now we're going to get into the nitty gritty. You're going to need some tools. And I recommend tools like these that are called spudgers. You can get them in kits. Um, you can find like iPhone repair kits and things like that. All kinds of useful tools in kits already put together for you and they're not very expensive. So if you want to look for tools like this, uh, they're called Nylon Spudgers, S-P-U-D-G-E-R-S, -E or you could look for Nylon Pry Tools and you should be able to find tools similar to these. They're not expensive, but if you don't want to do that, then something like an old credit card or a gift card, you might be able to make work. Your choice. You'll also find that a double-aught 
Phillips is needed and sometimes included in some of those kits. And you'll also want an equally small flat blade screwdriver. I'll explain that in a minute. This particular laptop only has one panel on the bottom and it is for access to the memory modules. We began by removing that one screw next to the green spudger there and then gently prying up that side of the panel. That side and the two shorter sides are the ones you want to work on because the other side needs to slide toward the battery. Try working on that side. Once you have one or two of them released, the rest are easy. So once it's off, get a closer look at it and you'll see what I mean here. These are the three hooks that you're trying to get to release from the opposite side. That's where the screw hole is. And these are the hooks that you're actually working to release by prying along this edge and then down the sides. After that panel is removed, there's another screw to remove. Sometimes, some models, it may be underneath that particular cover that you just removed. In this case, it is outside where the blue arrow is there. And what you're doing here is releasing the optical drive so it can slide out the side of the case. So to figure out where that screw is, just figure out where your optical drive is. And that screw will be somewhere along that edge of the optical drive. Pull that screw out. You will likely find a magnetic tool to be helpful in pulling the screw up out of that hole. Uh, just unscrewing it and then take your magnetic tool to get the screw out and save it in a safe place. You'll want to be watching these screws too. They're not always all the same length and you want to put the same screw back in the same spot if they are different lengths. Once that screw is released, then you can just slide the optical drive out the end like I'm doing here. And then you have all of these screws around the perimeter of the case to release. Plus, you have these two that were just exposed by removing the optical drive. And you have two more to remove up here that were exposed by removing the battery. In my case, all of these are the same length, except for the two that were exposed by removing the optical drive. Those two are silver. They will not get mixed up with the rest of them, which are all black. But that's my case. In your case, you'll want to watch and make sure that you put the right length screw back in the right place. Um, sometimes a tool like a small muffin tin might be helpful to organize where each screw came from. Just a thought. Collect all your screws, save them, keep them in a safe spot so you don't lose any of them. And then you're ready to turn the case back over and open it up to get to the keyboard. To remove the keyboard, we need to release four metal spring tabs that are along the top edge here. Those four locations. I found this to be easy. Start with the ones in the middle. Once you've got those two released, you can lift up on the middle of the keyboard and then more easily release the ones on the end. There you see I'm using the screwdriver, the flat bladed screwdriver, in order to push on the uh, metal spring tab. You want to do this delicately because you do not want to scar the plastic of your case. Metal tools working on a plastic case, it's the case that loses and you don't want to do cosmetic damage to your case. And as I said, once you've got the middle done, you can get a pry tool under it. And then that you can use to apply a little bit of pressure to make it easier to release the two end, end um, tabs. Okay, lift, lifting up on the middle, I am now sliding it toward the screen, sliding it away from the palm rest. Now you see the tabs all along the bottom edge of that keyboard. Those tabs slide in under the bezel. So you have to start, you know, release the keyboard at the top edge so that the keyboard can slide out from underneath the bezel and releasing those tabs. Once you've got it released like that, then you can flip the keyboard up and back like that, um, gently against the screen, and then you have access to the cable connector. What you want to do here is gently use a plastic pry tool 
to lift up on the clamp that's holding that cable. And you want to pay attention which side of the cable is up. It's clearly marked on this one. It may or may not be on yours, but take note which side of the cable is up. And there's some other things that I'm going to show you about the cable. Um, this is a closer look at the connector. And this black clamp here is what you're lifting on. It just folds up and then the cable can lift out. When you do so, you'll see that there's a stripe on the end of the cable. And you'll see also these two ears that fit down into um, slots, notches, in the connector. If you pay attention to those ears going properly into the notches and that stripe aligning properly with the connector, as, you know, pay attention to how it comes out, where it was, if you pay attention to all this, the keyboard's going to go back in correctly and you will not have a problem. If you don't get it lined up right, you'll have a problem. Release the cable. Once the keyboard's out of your way, there are four more screws to release here. On your model, it may be different, but on this model, that's what it is. Four screws and three more cables to release. The video cable there with the yellow arrow that one does not need to be released. It's completely unaffected by this task. But the other three do need to be released in order to get the bezel up off the bottom part of the case. That one is for the power button. And that one is for the touchpad. And then that one is for the three keys, three special purpose keys that you see up in the upper um, corner. So once you release those cables and pull those screws then it's time to start working on the bezel itself and it's normally easiest to try to separate it right there where the optical drive was you there's a little bit more flexibility in the bottom part of the case at that location and it's a little bit easier to get your tool in between the bezel and the lower part of the case once you've started it, you can slide your tool around, gradually unhooking one notch at a time, all the way around the case. And once the bezel's removed, you'll have a view something like this. I recommend two bits of maintenance at this point. One is, if your computer is a couple years old or older, then go ahead and replace that coin cell battery. Just a good idea. Batteries do not last forever, and it's inconvenient when they do die, and it's inconvenient to have to come back into it later when you could have done it right now. So just go ahead and do it. And as long as you're in here, you might as well blow out that fan and improve the cooling performance of your CPU cooler. Go both directions, just get as much of the dust out of it as you can, and you'll get a little bit better cooling performance from it. At this point, to replace the drive, there are just three more screws to release in order to pull the drive out of its, um, out of its bay. And you've already removed that one from above. So there's just three more to remove at this point. Once those screws are released, you can slide it back and then lift it out. Then pull the screws out of the carrier and release the drive from the carrier. Save these screws in a different spot. You'll see I've got them down here in the optical drive bay area. And um, save them down there because they're a different length, different size than the other screws you've been working with. And reuse them in this location. You don't want to just mix them up and use them wherever. Use them where they came from. Once you've um, remove the old drive from the carrier, put the new drive in it, tighten all the screws up, and slide it back in the same way that you pulled the other one out. Make sure that the connector is lined up, the SATA connector is lined up there, and, um, and then just slide it in. And then reinstall the screws. If you released that cable earlier, 
it's probably going to be easier to reconnect it now than later. Uh, so go ahead and make sure it's properly seated before you go on to the next step. Next step is setting the bezel back in place. Just set it in place and then gently start um, clicking it back into place. Once you think it's in place and you've got some clicks all the way around, go ahead and just make sure that it is fully seated. Apply a little bit more pressure all the way around, making sure that it is seated, and once the bezel's back in place, reconnect your cables. That one is for the, uh, the three special purpose buttons on this Dell laptop. And then you have the one that I'm pointing at that's the power button cable. And then that one, which is for the touchpad. Make sure all of them are properly seated and latched into place. Then... Resecure those screws, and then you're ready to reattach the keyboard. And if you pay attention, as I said, to the ears on the cable, the notches in the connector, and the stripe on the cable, then you're not going to have a problem. Make sure you put it in right side up too, and you're not going to have a problem. Then slide that keyboard back into place, Inserting, the, inserting it so that these uh, tabs slide in under the bezel in their proper location. And then snap it down in place, starting at the ends and then working your way across the top. Make sure that those metal tabs across the top snap back out into place to lock the keyboard into place. Then turn it back over and start working on the bottom and reinstall all the screws. You have all of those that the arrows are pointing at, plus the two at the optical drive, plus the two at the uh, battery area. Make sure all of your screws are reinstalled and snugged. Slide the optical drive back into place. Reconnect that screw securing the optical drive, and then reinstall that panel, uh, just snap it into place, and then uh, run the screw back in, and you're ready to install your battery and power. As I said earlier, I, I was not covering transferring uh, data from the old drive to the new. I've covered that separately in another video on Macrium Reflect. Uh, another way is um, Acronis. A a-C-R-O-N-I-S. Um, they have some software and even a cable to make it easy to do. All of the transferring can be done with Acronis in one step prior to the work that I've just shown you. If you've worked with Macrium, then what you've done is you've made a clone of your drive, and then what you're going to do is use that clone to restore the image to your new drive. And you'll do that next in this process. Mm -hmm. So, why replace your drive? If your computer has a traditional spinning hard drive, you might want to do this replacement with an SSD simply to gain better performance. That is a good reason to do it. If you already have an SSD, as was the case with this video, then you might want to do it because your SSD was getting full. Rule of thumb, if your hard drive has less than 10 to 15 percent free space, or if your solid state drive, SSD, has less than 10 to 25 percent free space, then it's probably time to replace it with a larger drive. You'll start getting odd errors otherwise, and in the case of SSDs, it will increase the wear on the drive. Now, it might be possible to forestall this task, put it off a while, by cleaning up your drive. And one way of doing that is to move all of your data off of your um, laptop drive onto a USB drive outside the laptop. Move your text files, music files, video files, anything that has been produced, move it off. Programs and your operating system remain on the drive. But if doing that doesn't free up enough room on your drive, then you might try some 
various cleanup tasks, things like getting rid of your temp files. And if you're working with Windows, there are utilities there. If you click on File Manager and right click, and you'll find some tools for cleaning up your hard drive. In any case, sooner or later, you're going to be wanting a larger drive. In this particular case, I replaced a 256 gigabyte SSD with a one terabyte SSD. The new drive is able to function more efficiently and thus is quicker than the one that I replaced. Additionally, the old drive, in my case, had reached a point of less than 1% free space. This was on my wife's uh, computer and I didn't realize that she was starting to have issues until she said, I can't do something I need to do. Well, with less than 1% of free space left on your drive, that likely means that very small fraction of the drive was being unduly stressed. And as I understand it, that means the wear on those cells of the drive may show up as um, data reported in the SMART drive health reporting tool. Self-monitoring analysis and reporting technology. All modern drives have this, and uh, there are tools for accessing it. This video is not about that, but um, I didn't bother investigating the, um, the health of the drive. It was out of room. It needed a new drive, so I replaced it. You should always replace your drive before your hard drive fails, and SMART can help you monitor your drive health. Why not replace a drive? I've, I've mentioned reasons why too. Why not? Maybe there's no compatible technology. It's, it's just obsolete. Well, it is still possible to get IDE drives like this for an older laptop. Good old spinning rust. You can still get them. And that's probably better bang for the buck for you, for older tech, than trying to do that adapter technology that I was mentioning. That's a possibility. It is possible, still, even if your tech's obsolete, it is possible to do an update or upgrade um, either to a larger drive or to a different technology. It's just kind of kludgy in the case of trying to connect IDE to SSD. You have to evaluate bang for the buck. Is it really worth what you're getting? Or would that investment be better spent another way? Now, if you're going to replace your technology, my personal preference is if you're going to replace technology, find a way of repurposing the old technology if it's still functioning. Um, I have replaced computer screens and laptops to keep them functioning. I have replaced keyboards and laptops to keep them functioning. I would rather keep it functioning than contribute to the global e-waste problem. I would rather find a way of repurposing and continuing to use it than contribute to e-waste. That's my choice. I would hope that you would make that kind of consideration as well. Another reason to possibly not replace your drive yourself is if your computer is so new that it's still under warranty. In that case, handle it in a way that, um, that covers your warranty concerns. Once again, I'm Geezer Geek, Dave. My channel's all about tasks that you can do with tech. And yes, you can change your laptop's hard drive, at least in all of them that I've seen. Maybe you have a situation that doesn't fit that. Let me know. I would be interested. See you soon. I've got more videos coming.